Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the greatest show west of the beautiful country of Morocco. It's the bench warmers. Yeah, not really. Not really the bench warmers. Not really the bench warmers, but it is the bench warmers. You know why? Because I'm here. That's what matters, right? This channel. Yeah. We need to we need to normalize just me being on the channel. We gotta run it back. Because everybody's falling in love with Jimmy and everybody's like, oh, Jimmy this, Jimmy that. Blah, 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 blah. No. This is good vibes, John. This is much. <laughs> no, Jimmy, Jimmy couldn't make it. He had to, <clears throat> he had to handle some urgent. Fa- oh my God, this, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Why is this showing? He couldn't make it because uh, he had something urgent that he needed to handle. Um, and I do apologize for going uh, live a little late. Uh, I am not feeling all that well, as you can tell by my voice. But here we are. I had to do it anyway. It's about the consistency. It's about coming back to y'all every Sunday at 10 o'clock. You know what I mean? So I do apologize if my voice is a little cracked. Um, I'm not feeling all that too great. But I got my coffee with me. And I got y'all with me. So we're going to have a good time. We have lots to talk about. Nothing too exciting. But we have to talk about it nonetheless. Damn shame. Ooh. Daniel Foreign in the chat says, I'm 29 days early, but better to beat the rush, says I. Okay. Yeah. I, I actually was, I was 29 days late, so I do apologize. H in the chat says, let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> My voice is, I'm done. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, we're, we're out here. Oh, man. The special one in the chat as well. What's going on? JT in the chat says, Jimmy as unreliable as Man United at the moment. Shake my head. Facts. 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 And the thing about Jimmy, yeah. And I, this is a little behind the scenes. This is the thing with Jimmy. He was raised in a family where he was raised to be a warrior. He never backs down. He always has something for everything. It, 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 it's, it's insane. He'll never just, just be like, yeah, that's on me. That's on me. That's on me. He always has something to say. That dedicate, that willpower, I respect it. I respect it because I don't know how he ha- he'll 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 always ha- he always needs to have the last laugh. He always needs to have the last say. It's incredible that dedication, the the fire, the firepower. As Vish so well puts it, dedication. <laughs> He's talking about dedication to me, but well, my dedication. But I'm talking about Jimmy's dedication to his cause and whatever. But anyways. Uh, no, for real, all jokes aside, um, Jimmy, uh, he just can't make it. Sometimes there's just things that you it's just beyond doubt, it's beyond your control. You got to think, you got to take care of family, you got to take care of, you know, things that, you know, mean more than anything, mean more than football, mean more than food, mean more than sleep, you know, more than music, whatever it is, you know, you got to take care of it. It's, it's what you got to do, you know what I mean? So we we soldier on, solo dolo. Here's to here's to here's to me. Uh, you know, uh, we can maybe get started by talking a little bit about the Man United uh, situation uh, and how it all began. Because this this hat right here pretty much encapsulates everything that was good about Manchester United. Because 2022-2023 season ended on such a high for Man United fans. And this preseason tour was going to be nothing but absolute vibes. And it was. You know, everything about this preseason tour was something something special for me, something special for Jimmy, something special for all of you guys because it, re- it really helped us to, uh, you know, get to a point where we felt like this was uh, success or this was a dream come true in many ways. You know, to be acknowledged by the football club, to be acknowledged by many Man United fans across the world, to be able to go visit and see Manchester United play uh, across my country, the United States of America, I mean, like, how much better can it get? You know what I mean? How much better can it really get? But it really started turning downhill from there after the preseason tour because you can clearly tell that the players came back to the country not really um, sharp, not really fit, not really rested. And it was just one of those things where the injuries that started piling on there on after and then the poor run of form and the performances and the and – the the bad results, it put us in a position where, oh my God, this is e- this season is actually going, like, it's downhill. It's downhill. 
we've had little sparks, little little you know, little breaths of ho- little glimmers of hope. You know what I mean? But what can you do? You know what can you do? We are at the tail end of the season. Here we are in April. It doesn't seem like we're going to get Champions League next season. It doesn't seem like we're going to finish in the top four, let alone top five. I don't know. I want to break that down with you guys because this is where it began. And here we are now. We need to talk about it. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the whole situation regarding Alejandro Garnacho and and a certain uh, YouTuber. I want to hear all of you guys. I want to hear... (coughs) I want to hear all of you guys... Oh, sorry. I can't talk. My nose is just absolutely just sinus the F up. I want to hear all of you guys, and, and, and I want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, so let's, uh, let's, 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 let's stick in. Let's get into it. Let's get stuck into it. Yeah. Um, Herb asking about uh, increasing my voice uh, volume. Here, I'm going to try and see if I can push it up a bit right here. Um, let me know if that sounds a little bit better. How does this sound? A little bit better? But let me get back into the chat here. A little yo-yo's in the chat. He says, is it easy to show good vibes after that performance? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's so hard. This season, honestly, as somebody trying to create content creator and all that, like, it's not. It's not. Like, I, I'm i I'm scheduling more um, FIFA videos, cause, uh, EAFC videos, because I have to. I have to try and come up with something else because I can't stay happy. I mean, <laughs> honestly, the EAFC videos aren't making me that ha- happy either. <laughs> uh, let's keep going here. Uh, D.B. Cooper says, dead vibes in my head, even worse in my heart. <laughs> D.B. Cooper, I feel your pain. Uh, Herb1234 in the chat says, good afternoon here from the UK. What's going on, Herb? He says, damn, Eric Tenog and this team are beyond help at this point and needs to move on. Sad times. I really want to like hear what you guys have to say with, the, with all of this. So let's just keep let's keep breaking things down. Uh, Vicious, come on, boys. Heads up. New day, new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. It's a new life for us. And I'm feeling good. I can't I can't sing at all today. This is um, my, I'm done. <laughs> Vish already looking ahead to next season, which is honestly at this point, as Man United fans, probably not the worst idea. You know, uh, Daniel Farr in the chat says it went all wrong this season. So many problems. If this happened last season, are we blaming the manager? No, I think we f- we feel it more this season because it's Ten Hag's second season and he spent more money. So I think that's why we blame him more this season. Um, last season probably we would. Uh, we would have blamed those signings not working out. Of course, having blamed Tarek Ten Hag as well. But last season, the signings worked. You know, Rafael Vran wasn't wasn't Ten Hag signing, but Rafael kicked dope ball for us. Um, Casemiro was his signing. Casemiro was one of the best DMs in the Premier League last season. Are you mad? You know, I think the only thing that didn't work out for us last season was perhaps a little bit of Jaden Sancho and perhaps a little bit of Anthony. But Jaden Sancho wasn't his signing, and Anthony was his, so he probably takes a little bit of. He probably took the hit on Anthony, but apart from that, everything else was working well. He had to bring in Vegers and Marcel Sabitzer as temporary low knee signings, and we still was able to get something out of him. You know what I mean? It's insane. It's insane. Uh, D.B. Cooper said, I'm not blaming the manager now, Daniel. This is 10, 10, uh, 10 years in the making. And and that's where it all kind of like stems from. And I think many Man United fans who are relatively like, you know, I don't want to use the word tempered because by saying that, I am sort of negating the rest of the Man United fan base. But m- most of the fans who have, I guess, kind of resorted to sort of taking a back seat on all of this understand that this has been a project that has been on the decline for a long time and, 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 not only now we're finally finally showing a little bit of that that uh that i guess that gusto that 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 strategy the implementation of the right strategies i mean how long has it been since we needed a proper technical director a footballing director how long has that been do you know what i mean john murtaugh respectfully to john murtaugh he was an accountant 
He doesn't have football background. And that's fine if he doesn't have football background and he took the job on. But Man United cannot be affording to do these kinds of things, give these top, top positions to people to learn on the job. Manchester United are an f- institution and we cannot afford our executive people to learn on the job. They need to be hired with the experience and the class to be able to take over and go, right? Players are probably the only position in the entire club that can learn on the job. The manager can't really learn on the job. He has to come in with a certain level of eliteness to be able to just go. If you imagine we hired a manager that was like, imagine they hired me as Man United manager. I can't learn on the job. We're going to finish on a relegated season. You know what I mean? Imagine they hired all these people that have no qualified experience except the fact that they have years of dedication working for the club. We have to change the strategy to be a bit more lethal. I love it when companies, you know, I love it when companies promote from within. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for that. But Manchester United are not a corporate. I mean, they are a corporation now to some extent, but we are not a bit. We are not that kind of business. This is elite. The standards are like a three Michelin star restaurant. We are elite. Or I thought we were, but to be able to get there, we have to be a bit more cutthroat is what I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? Um, let's keep going here. Let's keep going. Uh, Scott talk on the chat says, Hey, John and chat, United may be in utter shambles, but we might still come out with the same trophy as Liverpool. <laughs> Need to see us give it, out all, give it our all in the FA Cup semifinals and finals. And that could be the saving grace in all of this, honestly. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about that as well. Uh, Scott Saku says, don't know about Ten Hag, but we got a great core of young players to build on with the likes of Kambuala, Kabi Menu, Alejandro Garnacho, Amat, and Hoyland, which is at least one positive from the season, which is very true from Scottish Taco. Uh, need, to, uh, need us to avoid Europe completely if we can. And I agree. I agree. If we're going to avoid, if we're going to be out of Europe, I don't want the freaking UEFA, con- the Europa Conference League. If we get the Conference League, I swear to God, I'd rather us just send our U18s or U23s. U21, sorry. Thinking about all the Olympics, U23s. I'd rather send our resis to do the Europa Conference League. There's no way we're going to let the, we're going to put you, you, the Europa Conference League at our interest if we get into it. I'm sorry. Europa League, cool. Europa Conference, Europa Conference League, no way. Uh, Daniel Forces Garnacho shouldn't have liked those tweets from Goldbridge. Mark tends to be reactive and dramatic. Media training for athletes don't, just don't. Daniel, I really want to break that down. Because I really want to hear that. I really want to hear your thoughts on that. And I think we're going to wrap up at the end of the show with that conversation for the final topic. So please, Daniel, stick around because I want to hear your thoughts a little bit more. Herb says, Liverpool are currently losing to Crystal Palace. Something to celebrate. We have become pathetic. Um, Daniel Farr says, I don't think Casemiro was, wasn't his signing. He wanted De Jong and Rabiot. The club has shafted club legends and legendary managers. Give the man a structure before calling him out or firing him. That is very true. He wanted Frankie De Jong, didn't get him. He wanted Kim Min Jae, couldn't get him. He wanted Harry Kane, couldn't get him. There's a lot of players that he wanted that we couldn't get. So that is very true, you know. Uh, Stevie Cooper says, I put everything into the World, FA, the World Cup, the FA Cup, every single drop. Absolutely. At this at this point in time, Manchester United must prioritize their focus. They must prioritize Everything on the FA Cup. Everything. That's the only option. Uh, Vish says, uh, John Murtaugh wasn't an accountant. Oh, sorry. Did I say that? Uh, just someone from the back room for the U21s not qualified for the job. Facts. Uh, the special one, always with the bangers. He says, John Chin for manager. I'm here, baby. <laughs> if I take over, guys, it, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Guys, if you guys are just joining us now, Again, I'd like to apologize. Uh, I am not feeling all that too well today. So if, if I'm not, if my voice or my decibel isn't as usual with a level of excitement, please do forgive me. Uh, I'm not feeling all that too hot. Uh, Philip1980 in the chat says, uh, 19 years of Glazer damage. Hashtag Glazer's out now. Facts. Daniel Farr in the chat says, if United lose to Coventry, he might be gone. I don't necessarily think he's gone as of now. If they're looking to fire him, they'll do due diligence. Um, honestly, if that happens, then what am I going to say? If Manchester United can't beat Coventry, I can't sit here and say Ten Hag uh, is going to get his, save his job. No matter how much I think that, you know, 
a lot of this blame is very unfairly put on Eric Ten Hag. At the end of the day, if we can't get a result against Coventry, then he won't be able... He's not going to be able to save his own job. Do you know what I mean? And all due respect to Coventry, and they've done a phenomenal job getting to the semifinals, but if Manchester United cannot beat Coventry, that speaks volumes to the state of disaster that we're at, we're actually currently facing. Um... Uh, Philip1980 in the chat says, need the recruitment and a structure implemented and scouting everything reset. That, and, and you know, actually, Philip, that's a great word. Reset. I think Manchester United need a hard reset. I'm talking about, you know, bones, uh, flip the switch, bam. We need a hard reset. And I think Manchester United right now, with the, with the inclusion of Ineos, are going through that reset. And my hunch tells me that Sergio Ratcliffe and Ineos are really trying to decide how aggressive, how revolutionary of a reset they want to make. And I think that's where they're going to draw the line with respect to Eric Ten Hag as well. Um, uh, Ralph Rangnick said, we needed open heart surgery and eight, nine, 10 new players and a structure installed, hashtag Glazers out facts. And uh, whatever Ralph Rangnick says, whether we agree with him or not back then or now or whatever, we needed some sort of surgery. We needed that. We needed some sort of surgery. And I think we're kind of facing that now, um, honestly. Um, and K- and Jin Benji in the chat. What's going on, Benji? He says, I've seen the light, bro. Ten Hag really ain't it. Yo, Benji, you are not the first person to tell me that. And honestly, with each passing day, it becomes harder for me to sit here and say, guys, it's, it's, it's Ten Hag. He can do this. He can do this. I still believe in him. Do not get me wrong. You guys might think, John, you're chatting other sh- utter, tr- utter tripe, whatever. I'm sorry, but I do believe in him. It's, 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 it's just what I believe in. But I will not sit here and tell you guys that what you're believing is wrong because A, you have your rights and you have your opinions, right? And B, um, the results aren't showing. And I say it all the time, the buck stops with the manager. The responsibility always is befallen onto the head of something, right? And Eric Ten Hag is at the helm. And if things don't, don't go well for whatever reason, whether it's his fault or not, he's going to take the chop. He's going to get the chop. So I can't sit here and tell you guys that what you're saying is wrong, right? Um, uh, Herb says, my wife is from Coventry. I worked there for two years and we visit there regularly. Losing to them, if that happens, won't feel so bad for me as I have a genuine affinity for Coventry and Mark Robbins. Oh, that's very cool. Very cool. That's, uh, that's actually interesting. You know, I, I, I'm not married. I don't have a significant other. But if I was, and let's say she was like, for example, you know, I find out, you know, after dating that she's a, I don't know, a Liverpool fan or a Man City fan. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Is that like, is that like a spirit killer out in England? Like, is that like a thing where like you got, you can't be with, you know, somebody uh, of a significant other uh, who supports your rival club? Because I honestly think that would be actually lovely. You know what I mean? I'd love that. Just like, let's say we watch the Derby, you know, and I have a girlfriend or something. And we, we watch the game together and she's wearing a Liverpool shirt and I'm wearing a United shirt. You know what I mean? If United wins, she gets to rub it on, I mean, if, if uh, Liverpool wins, she gets to rub it on my face. But if Man United win, I get to rub it in her face. I think it'd be fun. You know, but again, again, the dynamic between sports here in the U.S. versus the sports out in England or Europe or everywhere else is very different. So I'd, I'd love to hear your, th- uh, hear your thoughts. If you guys know any couples that support rival clubs, you know, let me know. Uh, Daniel Farr says, I'd hope that Ineos knows the players are to blame regardless of what happens with the manager. Sure, he maybe he's lost them or will lose them and has to go, but let's face facts. We've seen this movie. We have seen this movie, Daniel, absolutely spot on. And I do, I really do hope that Ineos understands that some of these players are just not cut out for it. I'm sorry. I, I am. But it is what it is. Here we are. D.B. Cooper says, we need to pick a direction and stick with it. When you're lost in the desert and you need water, you can't go north and south. Pick one and you'll get out. We've been switching too often. Whoa. Bars. Bars there. D- uh, Daniel Farr agrees as well. He says, for real, just stick to something. I like that. I like that. And you know what that means, D.B. Cooper? <coughs> you know what that means, D.B. Cooper? That means conviction. That means resolution. That means impetus and the drive to want to do something head on. Man United need that steadfast approach, just pushing forward in one direction, just going for it, right? If we're going to fire Ten Hag, I want that. If Look, like I said before, and I'm kinda, I kind of want to move on. If we're going to let Eric Ten Hag go, 
then let him go and send send half the squad that that probably isn't good enough to play anymore. Send them away as well. Like hit that reset button with the might of a thousand Thor's hammers, a thousand Mjolnir's. Like just like mm, like 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 if this is the re- like if this is the reset button, like mm, you know what I mean. Like I want I want a full reset if that happens, because then. It shows us the conviction from Ineos's perspective, and we want to see that 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 willingness. We're gonna we're gonna do things our way or the highway, and we're gonna do it from the start, scratch off everything. Remember, remember that Latin phrase I said, "tabula rasa," clean slate. But if they're gonna cons- if they're gonna keep going with Eric Ten Hag, then I want them to come out into a press conference and say, "Look." We believe in Eric Ten Hag. I don't give a shit what any of y'all say. I don't care what these players are talking about. F the players. F whatever. F do whatever. We're going to go with Eric Ten Hag. I want to see a sense of direction. Whether we agree with the decision or not, what we can at least agree with at that point is that, okay, they're at least showing conviction behind the con- the, the, the decision. And D.B. Cooper spot on there. Uh, Jimmy V in the chat. What's going on, Jimmy? He says, D.B. Cooper spitting facts this immaculate Sunday morning. This uh, this Sunday morning here in New York is absolutely beautiful. I've just been um, having to deal with a couple of um, uh, personal things which have not been immaculate, um, including this um, this fatigue and exhaustion. Uh, but the weather is immaculate, and y'all seem to be in immaculate mood, so we can keep going here. Um, I really wish my voice was in a better state so that I can sing Sunday morning. You know what I mean? Sunday morning, rain is falling. Steal some cover, share some skin. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Maki in the chat says, hey, everyone. Hope you're having a good day. Maki, welcome, welcome, my man. Um, uh, uh, let's move on. Uh, today's short show is going to be a little bit short. Uh, I don't know if I can I can like keep going. I'm like getting cold sweats and I'm having a bit of a tough time s- s- uh, standing straight here. But we got to talk a little bit about the situation regarding Alejandro Garnacho and the whole situation with the YouTuber Mark Goldbridge. I did not want to talk about it. I did not. I did not. And if you guys have if you guys have thoughts or opinions on this, please get in the comments. And I really want to hear what you guys have to say because I'm I'm very interested. Um, but for those of you who might have who have no idea what I'm talking about, just to kind of say, uh, just to kind of clue you guys in, um, uh, after the match, uh, during the match, you know that Alejandro Garnacho got hooked at the halftime. And funny enough, if you guys were tuning in at, at my live watch along yesterday, I said that Alejandro Garnacho and Diogo Dalla were just not on it yesterday. It was a bad day at the office for the for Man United's right flank. Alejandro Garnacho was just having heavy, heavy touches. He just looked a little lost, and he looked tired. And when that long ball came from Anana straight to the chest of uh, Rasmus Hoyland, he chested it down. And to 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 take the sting and then to to. Slow down the trajectory of a long ball from your keeper and to redirect it into the path of your teammate, that's not easy to do. But Hoyland, Rasmus, he redirected that so well, right? And that ball came coming down. It came fizzing down. And then when it came down, he chested he chested that down to the path of Garnacho. And even the ball was in the air. Garnacho could have done a little bit more to, 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 to take that touch downwards into in a much more uh, proactive position but instead he took a really heavy touch and it landed at the feet of a uh, a Bournemouth player so much so like exquisitely in fact that he, he didn't even have to do anything he just took a first touch and passed it straight into the path of uh, Solanke and then Solanke goes on to absolutely rinse Kwame Kambala and whatever and all this stuff but but Garnacho not even just that one moment the, the, the first half from him, let's be real, wasn't all that great. You know, and that's not because I don't like Garnacho. Y'all know how much I love him. That's not because I don't like Diogo Dalo. You know how much I love Diogo Dalo. You know how much I love all my players. But the facts are facts. I'm not here to, you know, chat rubbish with y'all. I'm keeping it 100. That wasn't good enough. And when Eric Tenok hooked him off, it was just a bad day at the office. And that's fine. You know, people can have bad days at the office. And that's why I always tell people to, let's you know, tamper our expectations of young players. Because they're young players. You know what I mean? They're going to be inconsistent more often times than not. You know, one of the reasons why I can't really defend Marcus Rashford's inconsistency as much as I want to is because he's a lot older and more experienced. You know what I mean? But for Alejandro Garnacho, for Kobe Mano, for William Kambala, they're young lads. They're never supposed to have been playing this many games week in, week out anyways. 
you know? But the thing that happened wrongly, and I, again, I want to hear what you guys have to say because I really, I really want to hear your thoughts. When Mark Gobridge tweeted something after, and I want to, I don't want to misquote anything, so I'm going to actually pull it up here so I can kind of, you know, we can kind of really truly and break, break it down here. I don't know why I said bruck. I don't know why I said bruck it down. Bruck, bruck it down. Um, let's see. Uh, make me wait. Make me honor. Make me lose my breath. Give me water. Okay, so let me, um, I'm going to share this with you guys on screen so we can kind of, you know, talk about it. And again, I really want to hear your thoughts on this. So get involved in the comments. Uh, let's see. Can I share? Let's see. How do I do this? Voila. So this was the tweet from Goldbridge. He said, uh, Garnett has been one of our best players this season. Poor first half, but taking him off at halftime and holding him up as the problem is a joke. Many have done much worse week in, week out, and are still out there. And he also says, uh, Tenox subtly blaming Garnacho in the post-match press conference. Not a good look throwing a 19-year-old under the bus who has actually delivered for you this season. But then again, he's clearly scared of upsetting the bigger earners. And apparently... I checked it myself, and by the time I checked it, it was already too late. But apparently, according to this, uh, according to what's been doing the rounds, Alejandro Garnacho liked these two tweets. Yeah. I thought about it yesterday, right? And I don't want to talk about Goldbridge. I don't want to talk about anybody else because I'm not here to I'm not here to attack people. I'm not here to go like I don't. Goldbridge has his own reasons as to why he chats the way he chats. Whether I agree with it or not is, I couldn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, he's taking a clear stance he wants to show a lot more love to the players uh you guys know i show love to players all the time too and that's but that's organic for me like i do it because i actually love them i don't know if that's his case i don't know i don't know so i don't want to talk about it but this is where we're at garnacho liking these tweets and um it's gotten to a point where man united it's gotten silly season you know it's gotten silly season Let's say, let's say Sir Alex was the manager and Garnacho liked these tweets. It would be game over for Alejandro Garnacho. But he's like these tweets because they're Eric Ten Hag. And the reason why I'm a little scared now, and I'm truly, genuinely, I'm a little scared is because, again, I want to preface this by all saying that Alejandro Garnacho is a young lad. You know, he's going to make mistakes. Same for, uh, same for Willie Kimbala, same for Kobe Maynard. I'm not talking about just on the pitch. I'm talking about off the pitch as well. Yeah. I don't mind these players making mistakes because it's about how they respond from it. They're going to make mistakes once or twice in their lifetime. You know what I mean? Even more, many a times. But the fact he did that, and the reason why I'm scared is because I think the players... I think he's slowly losing the dressing room and I'm getting scared of it, you know? Because don't get me wrong, there's plenty of players in that dressing room that deserves to be in there, but there's plenty of players in that dressing room that probably shouldn't be there. Let's be let's be honest, you know? And him liking that, it sends, it sends us a message that they don't really respect Ten Hag like that, if that's the case. Unless Te uh, Garnacho comes out and says, you know... I mean, honestly, even if he came out and said... You know, I like those by mistake or whatever. Who the hell is going to believe it at this point? You know? The special one says immaculate signing, uh, singing. Thank you very much. If I was, uh, you know, you know my singing skills. Come on now. Come on now. Let's not play. Uh, D.B. Cooper says John dropping tabula rasa on fools. This team is making us go to new places. Mm, we're going to go to new places. Uh, Jimmy V in the chat says, my team is dog poo, but at least the sky is clear and my, my muscles are sore from a lovely round of the worst golf I've ever played. <laughs> Jimmy V, you're a golfer, yeah? Maybe you should um play golf with Jimmy K. Uh, he loves golf. Uh, Matt Cook in the chat. What's going on, Matt? He says, John, I don't know how long I can keep going on like this. Do you see any signings that next season will be any better? Yeah, here we go. Let's sign Kim Min-Jae. He's sitting on the bench at Bayern Munich. Tuchel is on a stupid madness. I don't know how the hell he's playing Kim Min Jae. Uh, he's playing fucking Eric Dyer. The licks, maybe I understand, but Eric Dyer over Kim Min Jae. Are you having a laugh? Tuchel, come on. I actually like Tuchel, 
But that's a stinker of a decision. Absolute stinker, fam. Bring Kim Min-jae to Man United. Use, bring Kim Min-jae as the replacement for Rafa. Yeah? Kim Min-jae is fast. He's strong. He's fantastic on the ball. Let him play alongside Licha. Yeah? And then bring in a young center back like a Jean-Claude Tadebo. You know? Rotate the three. Do you know what I mean? Do that. Or fucking play three at the back, change it up a sudden. You know what I mean? Uh, Jimmy V says, if Ten Hag goes, I want Ali. Give the, give me the vibes back. I think Ali going to Solskjaer. Um, I personally don't think he should be a Man United manager. I don't think so. And and let me explain. The reason why I say that is because I don't think Ali going to Solskjaer deserves to be... I don't think he deserved to be treated the way he was treated. And um, I think that ship has already sailed. I think it, I, I don't think him returning would be... Um, Good news for us in that sense. I think the good vibes should be Ali succeeding elsewhere, you know, and of course Man United succeeding as well. You know, I think I think those, that bridge has. I mean, that ship has already sailed. Uh, JT in the chat. JT is the pro, is your profile picture a picture of um um what's his name again? Zenitsu. I forgot his name from Demon Slayer. Is that him? Uh, he says, yeah, both of them are clearly exhausted from playing so many consecutive games. They've both been missing that extra speed and concentration they usually have since the international break. And I believe he's probably uh, um, uh, referring to uh, Garnacho and Dallo because we were talking about them earlier on. Uh, Daniel Farr says, Garnacho, okay, here we go. Here we go. Now we're kind of getting in. Now we're kind of into, getting into the deep end of it. And again, like I said, guys, get in, get involved and let me know what you guys think. Um, he says, Garnacho was bad yesterday, but he was only one of, he was only one on his side that could be replaced. Sorry, uh, I be- I bet if Eric Tanak could have possibly kept the subs, uh, I believe, I bet if Eric Tanak could have, he possibly could have subbed the Dallo and Camboala. Um, Rashford was getting was poor, but that side wasn't getting burned. Um, and maybe Garnacho is referencing um, Rashi because he's probably thinking, why the f- why am I getting hooked if um, Rashi's not getting hooked? You know what I mean? Maybe that's what he was attacking him. That's why he was attacking Eric Tanak for. Maybe, maybe like there is a, a division amongst the camp between the young lads like Rashi, um, I mean the, like like Cubby, Garna, Rasmus, and the and the younger lads, and maybe Rashi and the other older heads. Who knows? Maybe there is a division that we don't know about. Um, uh, Daniel Farce is honestly a 19 year old got a wrist slap. No big deal. Goldbridge tweets his feelings and his reach is wide. Garnacho probably in more trouble for for his like than the shit play. I don't know about this. I mean, I, I honestly hope that they just kind of handle it behind closed doors. And I just, I just want to hear, uh, you know, Garnacho saying it was wrong for me to do it or it was, it was whatever. And then he just acknowledges it. And Ten Hawk says, yeah, whatever, whatever. Like, I want them to acknowledge it. But again, we thought that was going to happen with Jaden Sancho. And the broski just freaking posted a goddamn, he pinned on his freaking tweet uh, page that he, he feels like he was like wrongly treated. And that could be the case again, which I don't want. Um, JT says to be fair, at least he unliked it immediately. Yes, yes, I think he, I think, he, and that's why, and that's why I like I have hope in all of this because I hope and pray that it can be sorted, like you said there, JT, behind closed doors. Uh, Daniel Forces, last time I checked, Eric Tenog isn't afraid of big names with the Ronaldo and Jaden Sancho situation. Stripping McGuire of the captaincy, uh, he's bold. He's not afraid. But my problem, and I tell this all the time to everybody, I even tell this to my family, you have to pick and choose your battles. You can't fight on all fronts because if you fight on all fronts, that becomes a war. And there's casualties on, on both sides and there's innocent people that, that get hurt in a war. You have to be smart about how to pick and choose your battles. You have to lose in some to win in others. You have to make sacrifices in some to win in others. That's how you win a war. But if you go all out, full on, 100%, trying to win every single battle, you're not going to be able to do that. And you're gonna, there's going to be casualties on both sides, and there's going to be innocent lives, innocent people getting hurt. That's what war is. And it's the same analogy with respect to how you manage your squad. Eric Ten Hag chose war when he decided to go with his way or the highway. 
I respect that energy because he said he instilled this energy of like, I am, I am the absolute. You respect me because I will take the fall and I will take the hit. If something bad happens, it's my responsibility. But the, but the trade-off here is I take the, I take the blame. I take the fault and I take the criticism, but y'all have to be with me. That's the trade-off that Eric Ten Hag demanded for his players. But going against war with Cristiano Ronaldo, going against war with Jaden Sancho, finding Rashi, you know, not pleasing some of his players. Like, he's choosing to fight on all fronts without any sort of wiggle room. And that can only mean that it either ends in one end of the extreme with Ten Hag being victorious in every single element, or it ends in the other extreme and Ten Hag losing his job. Because that's how you man that's how you start wars you cannot manage that way you have to be able to give a little bit of here to win a little bit of here if he was going to lose cristiano ronaldo somebody that was widely respected in the dressing room then he has to be able to, to to sort of be a little bit more flexible here we're not talking about managers in the old days we're not talking about back in the days of you know neil warnock where he used to, where, and, and the man who used to freaking like scream and shout and cuss at all of his players. I mean, remember that that video of um that um I forgot where it was. It was like some U 18s or like U 21s, something like that in like Eastern Europe or something, where the manager's like freaking going around just whacking all of his players. I'm, again, I'm not condoning violence, but we're way gone. We're way past the era of that kind of old school crazy management. We're in a new form, new era of man management and you cannot handle players that way you have to be smarter and i'm not saying every tenog is not smart but he has to be able to be a little more a little more a little more techy a little more finesse and i think that comes down to the fact that every tenog actually played as center center back in his time as a footballer i think maybe if he was a, a winger or a midfielder he'd have the ah the ah the va va boom you know what i mean um but yeah, uh, <clears throat> uh, Daniel Forces, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson booted Roy Keane because he had he did a negative interview. Sir Alex Ferguson dropped guys for playing badly, acting badly. Social media just adds layers to the complexity of being a manager these days. Exactly, which was what I was just referring to. Daniel Forces, I'm a Cubs fan. There's always next season, fam. Oh my God, Cubs. Uh, bring Kim and Jay and Delict. I would take that all day. Uh, JT letting me know it was any too. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you for that. I like Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. But I, I think... Um, um, out of all like the newer anime that I've been watching, I think Demon Slayer is cool. But um, Jujutsu Kaisen is probably uh, more of my favorite. Uh, more, I think something that I enjoy more. Uh, Rajan in the chat says uh, Liverpool lost. Oh, they did. There's uh, is that gonna become a two a two horse race now? Uh, John Lindell says I'm sad that our team is in total chaos. I'm with you, but I'm still ten again. I'm with you as well. Uh, we need Sir Jim to come and shout at these players. <laughs> But now I'm a little bit happy because Liverpool lost. Hey, Liverpool losing is whatever, but we need like Villa and Spurs to keep losing. You know what I mean? Daniel Farr says, seriously, how many problems can Eric Tanak juggle? Police investigations, partying in Belfast, poor form, club sale, players revolting. Oh, fam, he's getting inundated. Facts. Uh, DB Cooper says, got to dip early, John. Lebanese food awaits me. Hey, keep your heads up, everyone. We will return. This is later, DB. Enjoy, brother. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Uh, Romeo and Kenobi in the chat. What's going on, broski? He says Crystal Palace just gave Liverpool the Max Holloway finish. This is also shout out to those showing love to Streff for Paddock, too. I see you guys in there. Um... What, why we, Vish, can you explain to me what that means? Or what, what, what happened to Streff for Paddock? Did something, did something go wrong? Please explain to me what that what's going on there, Vish. Um, showing love to Streffer Paddock. They need love right now. What's going on? Do I need to go call somebody and tell them they love? I love them. Uh, Daniel Farr says, "LOL, Klopp out." <laughs> JT says, "My new aim for the rest of the Prem season is to end on a positive goal difference." <laughs> <laughs> My new aim for the rest of the Prem season is to win the FA Cup, and that's it. That's it. I don't care if we lose the rest of the Prem matches. We just need to win the FA Cup. That's it. Uh, DB Cooper says, oh, snap, that reminds me of Vish. Everyone watched Steve and Jay break it down yesterday post-game. Steve was speaking the, through me, and now I'm out. What? What the hell's going on? What happened with Steve and Jay? Um, <clears throat> Clinton in the chat says, Liverpool versus Crystal Palace game was 
epic. Uh, and the special one says, where is Bart? Where is Bart? Where is Bart? Where is Bart? He's afraid because Liverpool lost. Stupid fam. <laughs> uh, Roger says our season ends. Only place we are fighting for is sixth. Uh, is sixth? Is sixth Conference League? Is sixth Conference League or is because f- it's fourth is fifth is UEFA Europa and sixth is Conference League. Yeah, I think we have to finish six. Because I think with the new Champions League coefficient, then that means that one, it gets pegged down one more. So then six becomes Europa League. <clears throat> yeah. Um, this is not, I just seen them in there showing love in their live streams uh, and give you shout outs. Oh, that's awesome, man. Awesome. Who's been doing that? Uh, let's show me some links, man. Let me see. Let me see. I want to go check the comments myself. Uh, Daniel Farr says, FA Cup gets Europa League. Oh, does it? Okay. Uh, the special one says, Bart, show yourself. Bart, I know you're watching. You're probably doing a re-roll, a rerun. You're afraid. Get in the chat. We're here. We're here to get you. all those times you've been roasting us. We're here to get roast you back. All right. Romy Ron Kenobi says Bart Bart hiding like PT. <laughs> uh, six is also Europa. Seventh is conference. Then we have to fight for sixth place no matter what. I do not want conference league. Uh, okay, cool. Fifth and sixth is usually Europa. Okay. We have to fight for sixth no matter what. Fifth or sixth. And the FA Cup. And that's a, that's a sigh of relief if that happens. Do you know what I mean? Thank God if that happens. But but yeah, overall, just to kind of wrap up, uh, like I said, we love, I, I don't know about we, but for myself, if I may speak for, uh, speak for myself, uh, I support this club. I love this club. This club is everything to me. Honestly, it is everything to me. I have I have nothing else. I wake up every morning thinking about Manchester United, thinking about what I want to talk about with respect to Man United. This club literally at this moment in time is everything. And my life is so difficult. My life is so full of crap, as is everybody's, right? But the beautiful thing about Manchester United, a football club, is that it has the power to make our day just that much better. But unfortunately, these times... It has not been that case, and it has actually been a little bit more worse. And it's part of life. It's part of football. It's Nobody can be winning 100, 365 days. Nobody can be winning 24-7. But these days, I think we've just gotten exhausted, and I think this season just has been tough. But I want to end on a high note. I want to end on a note of positivity. I back the players. I back the manager. I back this team. I back every single person fighting for that badge. Show us it. Show us the fight. Show us the strength. Show us the determination. And that's all I'll ask for. Nothing else. Nothing more. Nothing less. Uh, Clinton says, I missed last season's Europa League moments. Yeah, well, uh, Romeo Kenobi says, I'll take the the, Vaz, the the Vase Conference Trophy. I'm shameless. Give me all the belts. <laughs> all right, guys. I think this is a good place for me to end it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I do apologize for starting the show a little bit late today. I had to handle a couple of things, uh, personal things, and of course, Jimmy is also handling a couple of personal matters, and he's not here. But consistency is key. We are always here Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Um, I want to get to a point where we we uh, we. All right, I'm just gonna say. We have something very special coming for you guys, and I say this every week, but this one is actually really special, and um, and hopefully we'll announce that for you guys real soon. But just stay locked in, stay tuned, because we are we are upgrading. We are upgrading. We're going up. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, that's it for me for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed this show. Uh, and if you guys are watching this on a rerun, please get in the comments and let us know. What do you guys think about the whole Garnacho situation? What do you think about Eric Ten Hag and Manchester United? Um, yeah, and I think this is a good place to leave it. Guys, make sure you take care of yourselves, right? Take care of your health. I always preach it and shout it. Uh, I need to be doing better. I need to be doing more. My voice is gone today. Um, it'll probably be gone tomorrow, but that's it for me for today. Thank you guys so much. Be sure to like this video if you have not done so yet. Subscribe to the channel if you if you like what you're watching. You know what I mean? Don't just subscribe because you just want to subscribe. Subscribe if you enjoy it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to ask you if you don't enjoy it. You know what I mean? Uh, and hit that notification bell so you guys are always staying up to date when whenever we're dropping new content. Uh, that's it from us for today. Make sure you guys have a fantastic 
rest of your Sunday. Be happy, be healthy, take care of your loved ones. And until next time, I will see y'all's latest. Peace.